Hey everyone, it's Jack from WhatCulture.com. Guess who's back? It's me, Jack from WhatCulture.com, and it's time to look at all the ups and all the down. Well, first of all, I've had a lovely few days off. I'm feeling all relaxed and refreshed and a little bit, little bit tired, a little bit sunburnt on my kneesies. But, it, but you know, what better remedy than to look at all the ups and all the downs from this week's Smackdown Live. Bit of a weird show, had a bit of a weird house show style feel. Uh, but then at the same time, a lot of storylines, not a lot of match time as well. So it was a weird blend. Almost felt like a go-home show, but of course it's not. That's next week. So let's see if it was a good or a bad show as we once again, I've said this a few times now, look at all the ups and all the downs. Let's go. So first of all, we saw a quick highlights video detailing AJ Styles' win on a house show in Madison Square Garden over Kevin Owens, and he's now the new United States Champion. He came out to open the show, pretty good decision. Uh, he came out, he did a very, very kind of John Cena, Roman Reigns, babyface insult, where he said that Kevin Owens looked like, I think, a dog's ass, or a, a horse's ass, some sort of animal's backside. He said that Kevin Owens' face looked like, but... You know, apart from that, it was a good promo because he said he's bringing back the US Open challenges, which Kevin Owens was kind of already doing, but it'll be really good to see AJ Styles do them if this carries on because he's great at wrestling matches and you want to see new guys come in and have good wrestling matches with him, I guess. So he laid down his first challenge, but it wasn't a new guy who came out to face him. It was John Cena, and the pair have obviously had two excellent singles matches since AJ started in WWE. And this hinted that there's going to be a third at some point down the line. They were about to go. They were all ready to, you know, have a babyface versus babyface excellent match. And then Kevin Owens came out and interrupted. And then Rusev snuck in through the crowd. They both beat down the babyfaces. It kicked off a new sort of feud. I like the alliance between Owens and Rusev. It's a fun alliance. It's straight out of King Ross's wet dream. Uh, and at the same time, I understand that it got the heat on them for interrupting what everyone could see was going to be a brilliant match. So, bit of a mixed bag to open the show, but everyone did well. Everyone played their roles to perfection. I'm going to give it an up. Next up, a non-title match for the WWE Championship between our champion, the Maharaja Jinder Mahal, and you know, the perfect 10, Ty Dillinger, Ben Potter's favorite wrestler. Fun fact there, uh, here at What Culture Towers. Uh, guess who won, Phil? Uh, the... Maharaja, yeah, uh, yeah that one, Jinder, yeah, <laughs> Jinder won. Um, which is the correct decision. It's quite sad to see Ty not get a little bit more offense in, but it keeps putting Jinder over as a strong champion. He needs to be, as he has that Punjabi prison match with Randy Orton coming up. But you know, it was, it was, for what it was, it was a decent match. Another up, 2-0 to the ups. Now it's time for our first down, unfortunately, because Jinder then cut a promo after the match and he lapsed back into this whole kind of evil foreigner rhetoric where he said, you know, you Americans may hate me, but I've got one point whatever billion Indian fans, you know, and, and like, I like heels to have more of a clear motive rather than just I'm not American and therefore a bad guy. Uh, he also promised as well, and this is the major reason for giving this little promo a down, he promised that he's going to bring the Punjabi prison with him next week, so we get to see it on SmackDown. We get to see the Punjabi prison. It's going to be good. Can't wait for my favourite stipulation. Next up, a rare singles match for two members of the tag team division, Xavier Woods versus Jay Uso. J definitely Jay. I'm still not sure which one that I met in Orlando, but I met one of them. And I'm going to assume it was Jay, my boy, because uh, he had a good match with Xavier. A very short match. My only complaint is that it's a little bit squashy, but they both hit each other with some high impact moves. The right person won, i.e. Xavier, one of the challengers, thereby, you know, casting a little bit of doubt over the Usos' reign. Leads towards kind of, I guess, the, the big match of Battleground, and we may see new champions. We may not. Maybe the Usos will weasel their way out of it again. Um, so yeah, again, not really many complaints. Very light on the action. Uh, only a couple of minutes long, but for what it was, it was a good match. Another up. Next up, a match, well, it was going to be a match between Shinsuke Nakamura and Baron Corbin, but then Nakamura jumped Baron during his entrance, and they brawled around for a bit and then got separated. I'm going to give this one a down, because if this had happened on any other show, I might have been more forgiving, but the fact is, so far on SmackDown watching it, we'd already seen Jinder versus Ty in a relatively short match and Xavier versus Jey Uso in a very short match. And then this match, was, it lasted no time. It was a non-match. Uh, uh, call me old fashioned, but I do enjoy some wrestling on my wrestling shows. So unfortunately this does get a down. Next up, Shane McMahon is the laziest booker in the world. Daniel Bryan is my favorite 
on SmackDown, and I'll tell you why, because Seamus sat there on the phone to Daniel, who wasn't there this week, and he was going, no, no, it's fine, no one's asked about James Ellsworth, ha, ha, ha. And then uh, Naomi came along with her sparkly new belt and said, who's my next challenger? And Shane went, let me tell you who it is. And then suddenly, every other woman in the division, apart from Carmella, she's the briefcase holder, came along and said, I want to be the number one contender. And it's like, why were they all hanging about there, just waiting? It was kind of lump all the women in and let's just get this out of the way. Shane seems to be of the same mentality because he said, look, it's going to be a five-way match at Battleground. The winner will go on to face Naomi. And it seems like the SmackDown women's division for so long was the better of the two women's divisions in WWE. And now it's getting kind of bogged down by these constant multi-women matches. And I, I sort of see why, because there's a lot and they've got to protect the less experienced ones. But Shane, just make a decision, man. You're meant to be a McMahon. Then we got to the match itself. Natalia and Tamina versus Becky and Charlotte. The heels won, very surprising, since Becky and Charlotte are two of the most popular, strongest women in the division, uh, but it was kind of for, with good reason, I guess. Lana came out, sort of distracted the faces, but didn't lead directly into the finish, and then Tamina super kicked Charlotte and won. Mm. And then the heels obviously were all on the ramp going like, ha ha ha, we beat you. I, I sort of see what, what they were going for here, but the fact of the matter is, the match wasn't a good one. It was kind of sloppy uh, and disjointed, and I'm just going to have to give it a down. Hopefully, the multi-women's match at Battleground gets a bit of time and allows certain people to shine, and then, you know, there'll be a decent challenger for Naomi. But, for now, ugh, not feeling too optimistic about the women's division. Carmella, though, still a compelling Money in the Bank briefcase holder. Meanwhile, backstage, Maria Kanellis was looking for Sami Zayn because he owed her an apology. Uh, she knocked on the locker room door. Uh, Chad Gable answered, and she went, Have you seen Sami Zayn anywhere? And Chad Gable said, Oh, Sammy Boo Boo? What was it, Sammy Woo Woo? Woo Woo, Sammy Woo Woo, sorry. Have you not seen this? Yeah, he goes, Sammy Woo Woo, and she goes, what? And he goes, it's a thing, we call each other it all the time. It's been driving Ross crazy today. He's trying to desperately work out what it is. <laughs> it's really funny. Then later on, she was hanging out with Mike, her husband, and Sammy Zayn came along and they were barring his way and he went, can you get out the way please, lads? And they went, oh, you owe us an apology. And he said, no, I don't. And then he said, Mike, do you even wrestle here? Like, what do you do? You just hang out with your wife all the time. Maria slapped him. Mike Kanellis smashed a vase or a vase over his head. And yeah, it was good. It, it, it was actually good. Mike's now had something to do. He's actually hit an offensive move, albeit in a backstage sort of brawl environment. But I didn't have any qualms with this, really. I just don't want either to lose the eventual feud. And obviously someone's going to have to. So I guess I hope it's Sammy. But for now, it's all right. And I'm giving it up. Next up, you already know it's going to get an up because it was another edition of the Fashion Files. Already gets an up. They're always genius. This time, it was uh, Runway Walker, Texas Ranger. It was cowboy themed. And they, uh, they interrogated the hype bros. And what I liked about this was the hype bros still had a bit of tension between them after they fell out during the uh, US number one contendership battle royal last week. So it all made sense. It tied two storylines together. And best of all, uh, Breezango still haven't found out who's been attacking them and stealing their stuff. So we get another edition next week of the X Fashion Files, which is going to be alien themed. I can't wait. Now it's time for the main event, and uh, I don't know what to say about this one. Predictably, from the opening segment of the show, it was Cena and AJ versus Rusev and Kevin Owens. And it was kind of a house show style match. Everyone hit their big spots. It was a slow, kind of safe pace. But the face is just one clean, immediately rendering Owens and Rusev a kind of useless alliance, and they only formed at the start of the show. So I don't really understand what they were going for here. You, you obviously can't put them over AJ and Cena, because AJ and Cena are two of the biggest stars in WWE, but at the same time, it makes Owens and Rusev look a little bit weak, especially as Rusev has only returned recently. So even though I kind of enjoyed the match, and even though I enjoy the prospect of Cena Styles 3, I'm going to give this one a down. They booked themselves into a corner. I don't know what I would have done instead. Luckily, I don't have to. I'm not Vince McMahon or Adam Blompier. Plumpy. So that's all for this week on Ups and Downs. What did you think of SmackDown? Because I think the Ups have won very narrowly indeed. It was a meh. It was an okay show. But what do you think? Leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. I've been Jack from WhatCulture.com. I'm back at work. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> And I'll see you soon.